guys, it's Lisa, and today I am in my bathroom, and I will go ahead and apologize for it. It's probably going to be echoey, but I feel like if I try to use the microphone doing a hair video, it might just get even more irritating. So let's just do this very casually. Today I want to tell you 12 things not to do if you want long, healthy, blonde hair, which is hard to do. So I was just getting ready to brush it out. Last night, I curled it with one of my favorite. If I had to tell you one thing to get to curl your hair, curling irons, air wrap, anything, it would be this. The next thing may be the air wrap. I do think the air wrap is fabulous. It's just, I don't know, I guess I'm old school and I just like to use that. And I feel like the air wrap is quicker. It's very easy, it does work, but I feel like it does not smooth each strand as much. It just kind of takes your natural texture and puts it in a curl. So I guess it just depends on your hair and how much time you want to spend. So I slept with it up in a little twisty last night. And this is what I would do in the morning. I don't like to really brush it out because it's not tangled. It's just that I want to kind of um, separate the curls and I may just brush through the ends like this. And then, this isn't gonna be a hair routine, but I just thought I would add this just so you would get some extra info on the products that I use. This, I've been loving this. I had a little can of it and I took it with me when I went out of town and I forgot how good it is. It's, it's kind of like if you want to like dry shampoo and you never do, then you would like this because it gives you the oomph, but not as much of the grit and ickiness, but I do like to lift up and spray, yeah, like underneath. And I have found that you really only need to do this one time because I will usually wear my hair if I have curled it for like two or three days and you can just kind of keep on, you know, zhuzhing that up and it really does give you body. I really like it. Let's just go ahead and go over the hair products I love, could get rid of everything else. I love the Colleen Rothschild shampoo, conditioner, and the deep conditioner. I still use all three. I use the deep conditioner on the ends and I use the just daily conditioner on the front and sides. Now, if I, for some reason, wash my hair, you know, two nights in a row, I would just use the light conditioner. I always shampoo twice, and we'll get to that here in a minute. Always shampoo twice, and then I do deep conditioner on the ponytail, like when I hold it in a ponytail, and then I smooth the lighter conditioner all over. When I get out of the shower, I use the Aki drying towel. We'll put two pumps of this, which is the Kerastase Heavy Oil. I can also use the good old original Moroccan oil. They just need to get a pump. Put that on the ends. I'm turned over and I just run it through the whole ends of my hair. Really work it in, rub the rest on my arms, and then I still, this is still number one. I like the Beauty Works that I told you about, but the Beauty Works is very similar to like Orbe Royal Blowout or something like that. You cannot use it too much. I wouldn't use it consecutively unless you have very dry, very tangly hair. I use this and I spray and I always, um, you know, get up underneath like here because that's where your tangles get. Then I use the Dyson and I've got them all. I've got Chi, Elkim, 
I got every dryer. I like hair dryers, so I have tried a lot of them. I always use this one, and I think this is one of the keys to long, healthy hair. I think it's important. My next favorite everything would be T3. I do like the T3. Okay, and then, you know, I, I do use like the clips. Even when I do my hair straight, I will put these in to keep the fronts straight. So those are very valuable. And are we ready to get started? Oh, one more thing. Oh gosh, I almost forgot the most important thing. Okay, this is the Colleen Rothschild Smooth and Shine Hair, hair Serum. This and this are getting ready to come up. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing that you never want to do, and I feel passionate about this because I did not, I naturally have pretty good hair, but I abused mine so much that it was not good. So I had a long kind of um, talk with myself and I decided I was going to do the things that it took to get my hair healthy. The first thing I don't do anymore is bleach or get highlights every time. Now, because I have pretty much gone gray, I'm 52, I have to get my roots done I would say I go about every four to five weeks. If I didn't do YouTube, I would probably wait longer. I'd probably be a six week person. My roots look dark because I don't have like white gray hair. I have more like the silver pewter type color gray hair. So I just posted on my Instagram what she uses. If I can find that footage, I will put it in here. What we do is color my hair. We color it and then we only do highlights every second or third time, usually the third time. So that would mean highlights, partial highlights. She only does like about five most of the time, five foils, and then she'll touch up like the money piece. But she only does that, you know, every third or fourth time. She kind of just evaluates and that's going to come into something down the line here. If there is a hair color that you can use that lifts your roots so that you're not bleaching, bleaching, bleaching every time, it is so fabulous. Now the caveat to that is my hair is golden. So I know there's some people that are obsessed with ashy, cool toned, blonde or brown hair. If that's you, it might be a little harder. You might have to get more highlights. I'm not sure because I'm not a hairstylist. Another thing is you may not be able to use what I use. And the way Morgan, my hairstylist, explained it is it would be like if you took two pieces of construction paper, different colors, maybe even both brown but different shades of brown, and you took the same crayon and colored it, it would look different. So you've got to just ask your hair person what they think and, you know, let them decide. I wouldn't do it yourself. I wouldn't. Hot tools every time or every day. There are some people that flat iron their hair every day. I think the flat iron was a good invention and it was a bad invention. I think it has messed up some people's hair mine included, back when I used it all the time. So I would not use hair tools every day. Like tomorrow, I'll put my hair up in this tonight. Tomorrow, I will just have a looser curl and I'll just brush it out, zhuzh it up and go. I, would, I don't ever touch up. I'm trying to think of the last time I ever did that, but see, I hear people say that they will just recurl their hair like the second or third day. Try to keep hot tools and heat off of your hair as much as possible, especially if you are blonde. Okay. Another thing you should never do if you want healthy hair is to use your hot tools all the way up. When I, I don't even, I will not even buy a hair tool if it doesn't have a temperature gauge. Like this one, I do it to 340. I've heard never to go over 350, so I keep it at 340, and it's still plenty hot. And, you know, you can gauge 
how long to keep it on each piece. These back thicker parts, I will maybe leave it on a little bit longer, but I, the minimum, minimum, that's what you're always striving for is to keep the heat off your hair as much as possible. Okay, heat protectant. You know, who knows if heat protectant really works, but I'm gonna keep on using it. And the one that I use and I love is this one, the Neuro Style Protect Heat Control Iron Hairspray. I like it better than the Big Sexy Hair. I like it better than the um, Iron Spray. This, I take each piece, spray it, then I take this Olivia Garden brush, brush it through, then curl it. Not only will that protect your hair, but this has a little bit of hold. Lightweight hold hairspray delivers shine, hold, and humidity resistance. I've never liked one like I like this. So that is a must for me. And I've already put, you know, oil, and I've already put this in my hair too. So I'm hoping that that, you know, really helps. This I see all the time, and it's something I never want to say to anyone because I know you get attached to the person that's doing your hair. Form a relationship with them. They're the experts. You want to trust them. But if your hair is damaged, continually fried, don't go back. Don't go back to them. If it's your fault, then try these steps to know that it's not your fault. And if it still keeps getting fried, like one time this guy used Olaplex on me. I'm not an Olaplex lover. I mean, I'm, the styling products and stuff might be okay, but as far as Olaplex, when you're getting your hair done, I have never liked it. But my sides right here just snapped. I mean, like they were this short. And when I showed him, he said, hmm, I used Olaplex. And that was the last time I was there because one, I don't think he felt that bad. And two, why would you keep going back to someone if your hair doesn't look good. So if your hair is not looking good, you might need to go to another person that uses different products. They might, what if Morgan had never tried using just color on my hair and I was still trying to get highlights all over all the time. I get this a lot. How do I get my hair to grow so long? One of the things is don't get your hair trimmed every time. Now I just got my hair trimmed. What she does is a lot of times she will blow it out straight and I tell her to dust the ends and even it up. And that's what we do. And I'll, I think I have a picture of how much she cut off. It's usually just like every once in a while I'll go ahead and have an inch or two cut off. But most of the time I'll say, do I need a trim? If I do, just even it up. I want a good healthy line at the bottom. But don't believe people when they say you have to trim the bottom of your hair for your hair to grow out of your head. I don't think that is the case. I do think if you have a nice, healthy edge or end to your hair, bottom, whatever, I do think that is, it's almost like an optical illusion. It will look longer. Your eye will have a focus point and it will look longer. And I just think it looks better anyway, especially if you're gonna have long hair, you want it to look healthy. This is something I don't do, but I know that this happens. Wearing a ponytail too much or, you know, just wearing it up. I do use those bands. I got these from Ulta and I really like these. You can get them really tight on your ponytail and get a good, I had a good high ponytail the other day but I took it down as soon as I got home because I feel like it's stress on your hair. And if your hair is already color treated, it's already probably a little bit brittle and you don't wanna just keep it in a ponytail too long. What I do is I take these ugly Monate clips I got probably six or seven years ago. I twist mine and I put it up like that. I put two of them in there. And that's what I do while I'm around the house because I understand wanting to get it out of your face. Next thing, number eight, is not using oil. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I've got oily hair, so they don't want to use oil in their hair. 
your ends need it. Think how old this hair is. So I always put two pumps of this in the ends of my hair. And then the next day when I brush out the ends before I brush, okay, this is gonna be another one down here, number 10. I never, even if I'm getting ready to get in the shower, I never brush my hair without putting a pump of this in my hands. And you know how you'll always, you'll get those knots like right here and it's like a big nest. I will take the one pump and I will just rub it all in that knot and the ends of my hair. Then I brush it out gently with my brush. So please do that. You will notice a big difference. The knots will just slide out. And of course, start at the bottom, but your knots will slide out. Washing your hair, I've already kind of mentioned that I think it's important to wash your hair two times. You'll notice a difference. The first wash will not even lather like the second. The first wash is gonna be getting this and this and all that oil out of my hair. So you wanna get it really clean. You wanna get your scalp really clean and your hair really clean. That second shampoo will lather. You don't have to like, don't scrub the ends of your hair like that. I just usually let it run down the ends of my hair. And that way, it's open and ready for the conditioner. Now, I do think if you have long hair, longer than collarbone, you should use a deep conditioner on the ends. I just think it has more, um, I just think it's more emollient. That's what I do. If I had to choose just one, I would just use deep conditioner. I do think shampoo makes a difference. Shampoo and conditioner, I just think you need to get it really clean and then really moisturize. Okay, this next step should have a big star beside it. It probably should be number one. So I hope you've made it this far. This is something I never realized until we rented that house before, while we were building this one. I have grown up with a water softener. What a water softener does is it takes your water and it, the salt actually cleans the pellets that are in it and the pellets that are in it attract all of the minerals and stuff, pollutants that are in your water. So it's not salt, it's just the salt cleans the pellets. We moved to that rental house, they didn't have one. And I didn't think anything of it either. All of a sudden, about three or four weeks later, I could barely blow out my hair and it was just flat and lifeless and it was real tangly. Like the ends just constantly were tangly. And I remembered we don't have a water softener. So I wanted to just pay and have one installed. That's how bad I wanted it. But what we did is we ordered one that you put on your shower faucet and it has a filter in it that you have to replace. And when we would clean that filter, you could see the debris that was coming out of the water that is just city water. I just really feel strongly about it. I feel so strongly that I was washing my hair at my parents a lot of times, and I was using getting their water and bringing it home and washing my hair in the kitchen sink. Brooke has noticed since she moved out of here, and when she's home, a lot of times she'll go ahead and take a shower real quick just to get that soft water and get that back in her hair. And then when I was at the Like to Know It conference, we were all standing there at one of the parties and Lisa J here on YouTube, one of the best things she's ever done for her hair is get a water softener. And I was like, thank you, thank you. Somebody gets it because I feel like people don't believe me when I say that, but it makes a big, big, big difference. Even Morgan noticed my hair tangling more, not being able to brush it out when I didn't have a water softener. I think your hair, when it's damaged and stuff at the end, is so porous that those um, that junk in the water gets in there and it makes it just yucky. So I really think that's important. I understand you might be in an apartment or rental or you're Husband may not feel like putting one in. I'll take a picture of mine and put it in here. At our old house, because we had our own well, and so we had a filter that filtered the water before it even went in the water softener. 
you guys would not believe what that filter would look like. It would, we had so much iron in our water, it would be the rustiest, you, you've seen the fences and the sides of people's houses and sometimes even their car where they've let their sprinkler hit it and it gets orange. Think of that in your hair. And then the last thing, number 12, some may not agree with this, but I believe it in my heart, don't use the Revlon, or I would say any of those one-step stylers. That thing came out, I know it was the rage, everybody was using it, it gives you the blowout. We got one, and that thing is so hot and you cannot turn it down. That air is way too hot. So I try to stay away from anything that I am dragging down my hair with heat. Any hair tool, like a flat iron, I didn't, I even tried one of those cryotherapy. I didn't even like that. I don't like anything that I feel like I am just really pulling and dragging on my hair. I would rather loosely, this is what I do. I loosely take a piece and I go like this, hold it for a few minutes and then I let it go. And I have it on 340, which is plenty, plenty hot. So I hope this answered all of your questions. Just to go through the brushes that I use, they're very used because I love them. It doesn't matter, I'll get another brush and I still like these. This is the Spornet Long Smooth Operator. <laughs> and I love it. I use this for my blowing it out. I use this good old fashioned wet brush, paddle brush to brush it when it's wet. I use this Olivia Garden to brush each piece out with the um, heat control. And I also use this when I'm brushing out the knots, starting out the bottom with the oil already in it so that they just slide right out and you get a good conditioner. I also always brush out my hair before I get in the shower. I don't like to do it in the shower. And I just think, I don't know. I, like to, I don't like to get out of the shower with knots in my hair. This comb, if you've been here with me, you know this is the same stuff I have used for years, but this comb, is what I do my part with. I'm not somebody who wants a like perfect part. I usually just brush it back and let it fall because I have a little bit, this little piece right here is kind of like a cowlick and I don't like fighting with it. So I just let him do his thing and then that's it. Then I would be just silly to say that your nutrition does not have a lot to do with it. Now I, you probably know I'm carnivore. I have been for two and a half years. I, I don't think there's any doubt that the collagen and the good fat and the not eating bad stuff probably helps my hair grow. It grows like crazy. I, the other day when Morgan trimmed my hair, I told her that people accused me of not getting a trim. She said, if we didn't trim your hair, she said it would be past your butt because it just keeps growing. And I, I, she thinks it's a lot to do with how I'm eating. I do take or use the, or eat the chocolate trim from Modere. Do I know in the, um, I don't always do the collagen. I usually do the trim and the trebiotic. Do I know that that's a miracle worker? No, but I think it has good stuff in it and it tastes good. <laughs> so I do think it's your nutrition. I think it's your nerves. I know like when I went through a divorce, you know, I would lose a lot of hair. So I do think different things in your life. I've heard that COVID can have an effect on your hair. So, you know, the best thing you can do is when you lose it, take care of the new hair that you get. Don't start frying it as soon as you get it back. So I hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm thankful that you're here and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.